Crystal Blunt. I live at 15 School Lane, and I live in Ard. And I live in Ardmore. Um, and I've been before this uh, board on many occasions. I'm sad that I have to be here today, and sad that I had to watch that um, post uh, everything that's been happening around uh, policing for people of color. I do ride that road all the time because I go to work down on that end of the block. And you know, I, if I, that was me, I probably would have pulled over safely in somewhere public considering um, what's post happening around the country. Um, I have been on the other end and been followed by a white female officer up Mary Portis Road to work. And um, she followed me all the way down to the parking lot till I got out of uh, my car. And one of the uh, white teachers that were going in the building said to me, oh, I think you were racially profiled. So I know it happens um, for why the um, police committee was born out of the uh, profiling they did on uh, Reverend Albert Gladstone Davis. And I'm really concerned about what I see. Um, he had a gun drawn. Suppose that just one went off. Would, how do you explain that to somebody's family when you stop Harry Mobley? Suppose that would have went off when you stop everyone else in this community with your guns drawn, you would then, th that's an accident that's waiting to happen. And what do you explain to their families? You, as a commission board, are supposed to govern everybody in this community. You're elected officials to do that. <coughs> Underneath the superintendent's leadership, I'm really concerned because some of these incidents have happened on his watch. You cannot be 26 plus years in a, immersed in a, a community and not know the needs of this community. That tells me that he doesn't care about the needs of this community. I'm not understanding why, like I agree with Reverend Heavis, that there needs to be an outside council to look at it and to govern you guys because you're not holding him accountable. Mr. McNeely's not holding him accountable. Ernie McNeely, you're not holding this man accountable for his actions or his officers. How can you lead if your own people, his own people, the FOP, have an issue with his leadership? That should be a red flag. If your own people that you're governing underneath you don't feel like their voices are heard or they're not getting good leadership, then you are responsible for putting in goals and objectives into his evaluation and those police officers' evaluations to meet these goals. Are you waiting for one of us to get killed or a family member to be lost because of his actions and his police officer's actions? Do you want blood, you're, somebody's blood on your hands because you're not putting in things in place to make sure that he's held accountable and he's doing his job? I really think you need to go back and visit what Major Ben said, because I pulled it and looked it up and highlighted. He gave recommendations. He gave recommendations for the police committee in that report of what you needed to do. We paid for it as taxpayers. He came here, he gave you his recommendations, and then you sort of put it on the back burner. You need to do something for someone to get seriously hurt out and a family member loses a mother or a father or a son or a daughter behind this man's leadership. You need to hold him accountable and we, the public, need to hold you accountable as elected officials. You're to govern everybody so everybody feels safe in this community. Thank you.